Welcome again to this course in the heat transfer. This is the third lecture in the heat transfer course. In the previous lecture, we derived the general heat condition equation in Cartesian cylindrical and the spherical coordinate. Besides that, we illustrate how can we develop the temperature distribution for a simple case study of uniform thermal conductivity when there is only one dimensional heat flow and the steady state condition without any internal heat generation. And also we illustrate how can we find out the heat transfer through a composite wall. And also we discuss if there is a heat convection environment attached to the surface of the wall. Uh, Besides that, we illustrate the concept of temperature drop uh, at the interface. So that now, which is this is lecture number three, we will uh, give you some uh, mathematical examples that cover this topic. So that let me first start with this topic. Okay, let us consider that uh, we have. Uh, reactor walls and uh, we can plot it uh, schematically like this okay uh, let us say that uh, this is wall a and this is wall b uh, as you remember that uh, uh, the length of each thickness is very important in the conduction heat transfer analysis so that uh, this is l which is the thickness of uh, wall A, and this is the thickness of wall B. And the total thickness is L equal to 320 millimeter. Now the temperature here, temperature here is T1, it is 1325 Celsius. And the temperature here, which is T3, is equal to 25 degrees Celsius. Beside that, uh, we can say, <coughs> sorry, that this reactor wall, uh, which is a 320 millimeter thickness, is made up of an inner layer, uh, which is fire break, which is f uh, cover, uh, which is A, material A, with thermal conductivity of A, is given as thermal conductivity of A, equal to 0.84 watt per meter celsius and the thermal conductivity of b is 0.16 watt per meter celsius beside that the reactor operate at a temperature uh, 1325 celsius and the ambient temperature is a 25 degree and 25 degree celsius okay so that uh, it is uh, required uh, to determine the length, okay, or which is the thickness of the material A and material B, okay. This is the total thickness, but the thickness of L of material L and thickness of material B is unknown. So that our uh, goal is to determine the thickness of materials A and B. Uh, now the temperature um, is given at uh, this temperature and this temperature is given. Now let us say that the temperature here T2 is given to be, for example, it is given 1, 2 or, or Celsius. Okay. Now, of course, in the heat transfer problem, it is very important to make assumption. And uh, our assumption is that we solve for one dimensional heat conduction equation. And there is no internal heat generation so that our governing equation will be del squared T del x squared equal to zero. And we solve the governing equation of this uh, heat diffusion equation. And we obtain temperature distribution that will be linear. Okay. If you remember, temperature distribution will be linear, okay? Now, we would like to find the thickness of L and B. Uh, beside that, uh, let me show you how can uh, the analysis make. 
Firstly, we know that the heat flux in the steady state is constant through the wall, okay, which means that the heat transfer flow from high temperature concentration to lower temperature level, okay, from higher level to lower level, will the flow will be remain constant so that I can use um, per unit area, which is the heat flux, uh, I can write that EQ equal to T1 minus T3. As you remember, T1 minus T3, okay, divided by L divided by K, A, okay, plus L of B divided by K of B, okay, and this is of course equal to the heat transfer through the wall A is T1 minus T2 divided by the thermal resistance here per unit area so that I will write LA divided by KA and this is equal to the heat transfer through the wall B so that I can write T2 minus T3 T2 minus T3 divided by the thermal resistance of this wall which is L of B divided by K of B now uh, actually I think we can uh, make uh, considering first two quantities okay which is this quantities because t1 t3 and t2 is known and the uh, thermal conductivity is known okay but the length of a and b is unknown so that i can make a relation which is from the schematic diagram we can write easily that uh, L of A plus L of B equal to L, which is, uh, I will convert it into meter so that it will be 0 0.32 meter. In this way, I can write LB by transferring the thickness of the wall A to the right hand side. In this way, I can write 0 0.32 minus L of A. Now, I will sub this value here so that I reduce the number of unknown variables. In this way, I will choose, as I mentioned for you, just these two first two terms, so that T1 minus T3 is can be written like this: 2325 minus 25. Okay, 25 divided by uh, L of A is unknown. Divided by thermal conductivity of A is 0.84. So that I just substitute my value uh, plus L of B which is this divided by thermal conductivity of B is uh, thermal conductivity of B is 0.16 equal to this T1 minus T2 which is 1325 minus 1200 divided by L of A divided by 0.84 now I will use this LB will be substituted here okay and uh, in this way we have uh, when i uh, find this uh, the result of this value it will be one three double o double o divided by uh, one divided by point o eight uh, eight uh, will be one nine one nine o l of a plus one divided by point one six is nothing but six point two five multiply by this value okay because i will sub the value which is the thickness of uh, b here so that i will have 0.32 minus la this is equal to this quantity only which is 105 divided by l of a i just multiply this value by this i made a simple mathematical simplification and complete the solution with very simplification in mathematics till I get that uh, the length of thickness A will be 0 0.116 for meter which is equal to uh, 114.6 millimeter in this way it is very easy to find the, the thickness of B because it is nothing but uh, 320 uh, 20 minus 114 in this way the length of Thickness B will be uh, 205, 2005.4 millimeter. Now, after we calculate this uh, thickness of material, now let us uh, find the heat transfer 
okay the heat flux okay because it is the heat flux per unit area the heat flux actually can be calculated easily from this or from any of these uh, three relation because the heat transfer will be constant through the whole of the wall in this way after i using this or this there is no problem and substitute the value here in this way the heat transfer value will be for example if i use t1 minus c2 then if i use this to calculate the heat transfer this will be 1325 minus 1 to the four oh, divided by 0.1146 don't forget to convert the unit of the length in meter not in millimeter divided by 0 0.84 and this way the heat transfer which is the heat flux will be 916.2 watt per meter square this is the heat flux and the heat flux is nothing but the heat transfer per unit area and this way we find how can we the, calculate the heat transfer uh, through a composite wall hmm. now let us take another example okay i will make one similar to the first example but here uh, i will include the effect of interface resistance which is that which is illustrate that temperature actually drop between the two walls okay because here i assume that the temperature is uh, uh, 1020 100 okay but it is actually a drop okay Be due to the resistance between the interface it will uh, give me a drop in temperature okay so that the temperature profile will be something like this if I, if i give t1 for example uh, let us just change the numbers and this is uh, this is will be two, two t2 t3 and this is t4 let t4 is one uh, celsius i'm uh, sorry uh, one one uh, celsius okay and now this is t2 and this is t3 okay now uh, as i mentioned before this is a wall is made of inside layer and uh, which is the layer a of and layer b this is the thickness of l which is l of a is uh, this given for us and length of b is two for a uh, millimeter the units in millimeters and now the temperature of the side wall left and right uh, is give is uh, kept at uh, azotherm temperature which is 725 and 110 uh, celsius and uh, besides that the contact thermal resistance between two walls which is here thermal resistance okay uh, thermal contact resistance will be all point double uh, o three five celsius per watt okay this is uh, the unit of the thermal resistance okay because you know that the q is nothing but temperature difference divided by thermal resistance in this way the unit of the thermal resistance will be delta t over q and the unit of temperature is celsius and unit of q is watt so that it is uh, celsius uh, per unit watt per watt and after that uh, the thermal conductivity of material a is given which is 1.7 watt per meter celsius and the thermal conductivity of b is also given which is 5.8 watt per meter celsius now after this uh, we want to find out the heat transfer rate the heat flux okay which is the heat transfer per unit area okay for this schematic problem, uh, diagram and after we calculate uh, the heat flux we need to find out the temperature drop at the interface and temperature drop at the interface is nothing but t2 minus t3 okay so that i need to find the heat flux in watt per meter square and i want to find the temperature drop at the interface which is t2 minus t3 is also unknown so that let us firstly found q and we should we should keep in our mind that the heat transfer through the wall is kept constant okay the heat transfer through this wall 
equal to the heat transfer through this wall, okay? So that I can write, as I illustrated in the previous lecture, that the Q is delta T divided by summation R theta. Now, delta T is of course T1 minus T4, okay? T1 minus T4. Delta T here, I have two conduction resistance, which is uh, thermal resistance of A plus thermal resistance of wall B. And here, the thermal resistance of the interface between the wall A and B, which is given for us, which is uh, point 0035. So that uh, I think now it is very easy to find uh, the heat uh, flux, which is uh, T1 minus T4. Now, uh, R thermal of A, which is L divided by uh, Ka, I will transfer the area to another side uh, till I get the heat of flux, which is watt per meter square, plus uh, the thermal contact resistance, which is given for us, plus the uh, thickness of wall B divided by its thermal conductivity. And after I uh, use my number here, and I can find easily that the result will be 1.7 plus uh, 0.0035 uh, plus 0.24 divided by 5.8 the heat flux will be 5324.67 watt per meter square. This is the heat flux, okay? Now, after we find the heat flux, uh, let us find the second uh, subject, which is the temperature drop here, T2 minus T3, okay? Now, uh, you can see here that uh, the heat transfer, the Q, uh, is constant so that as the heat flow through the each layer, so layer A and layer B, is the same, okay, the heat transfer, uh, this will be the same, which means that this number will be the same for layer A and layer B. In this way, we can develop the following. I can write that uh, Q in a similar manner that I illustrated in example one, this is will be T1 minus T2. T1 minus T2 divided by uh, the thermal resistance here, which is uh, L of A divided by K of A. And this is equal to T3 minus T4 divided by L of material B divided by its thermal conductivity. Now, after I... Uh, uh, make a mathematical uh, simplification for example I will solve only this okay which is uh, firstly which is 5 2 uh, sorry 3 uh, 2 4 equal to 7 because the temperature is, is 7 2 5 minus T2 divided by 0.12 divided by 1.7 in this way T2 will be uh, 3 4 9 Celsius similarly I can write that T3 minus T4 divided by the length of the material B divided by external conductivity equal to Q and Q is actually is 532.4 and I know the value of T4, the value of L and K is known in this way the T3, T3 will be double uh, 3 or Celsius in this way I can write that the temperature drop will be T2 minus T3. In this way, the answer will be 18.81 Celsius. In this way, you can see how big is the effect of the contact uh, interface, the effect of interface on the heat transfer and on the temperature drop, okay? So that it is uh, very important to include the effect of the temperature uh, uh, drop at the interface, okay? Because here, uh, as we mentioned, uh, we, we consider that it is constant, okay? Which is here, but actually the temperature uh, in the interface doesn't uh, remain the same because there is some drop in the temperature happening and there is a physical reason behind, behind this uh, reduction in temperature and this drop is due to the uh, contact um, uh, 
between the surface, okay, the surface A and surface B, there will be some loss and the heat transfer due to the friction effect, for example, uh, and in this way we get the, there is a temperature drop on the interface. So that we illustrate, uh, this is a topic also, which is very important, in the heat transfer. Now let us take uh, another case study, which is uh, relatively important. Uh, let us take uh, this example. For example, I will draw, I will, uh, uh, draw the isometric view to illustrate the concept of the cross-sectional area that make an angle 90 degree with the flow direction. So that uh, let me draw the schematic diagram of the problem, which is this. Uh, this is okay. Actually, the reason for drawing the three-dimensional heat transfer control volume and despite our analysis is just for one dimension is to so that it will be clear for you the cross-sectional cross -sectional area so that I will rename the wall as A, B, C. I hope that my drawing is clear that this is a three and uh, let me write this note here the dimension in centimeter okay the wall of uh, this uh, thickness of this wall is eight and this is five now uh, the distance from this to this line is seven and the distance from this line to this line is a three and the temperature the heat uh, will transfer here so that if you take the front view of this uh, diagram okay the front view it will be something like this okay it will be something like this a b c d okay it will be nothing but this okay and the heat transfer flow through this so that this is q and the wall, this wall is, is kept at 400 Celsius and uh, this wall is kept at uh, 60 degrees Celsius. Now what is the important here and I would like to introduce to you is the wall B and C, okay? So that now uh, our concern and our uh, work is to calculate the heat transfer through this wall, this composite wall. I want to calculate the heat transfer, which is a Q measured in what? Okay, not the heat flux, okay? For this schematic diagram. Now, uh, it will be very easy to calculate it uh, because all we have to do now is that we firstly calculate the thermal resistance for each wall separately, okay, to simplify our solution. For example, of course, the, heat, the thermal conductivity of each material is given for you so that it is not a problem, okay, it is known value, now in value. Uh, so that, uh, as you know, we want to find the heat transfer, Q. Uh, the Q is nothing but the temperature difference divided by the thermal resistance. And thermal resistance here we have A, B, C, D. The thermal resistance here, okay? Uh, we will decline any reduction in temperature at the interface. I hope this is clear now. So that here will this will be delta T divided by thermal resistance of A plus thermal resistance of B and C and D, okay? Okay, plus our thermal resistance of C plus thermal resistance of D. Okay, we will we should calculate the resistance of each wall. I think it is very easy to calculate the thermal resistance because the law of the thermal resistance is nothing but uh, L divided by K A. Okay, because this is wall, then the thermal resistance for this wall will be its length. Okay, divided by its thermal conductivity divided uh, multiplying by the cross-sectional area. Now, the cross-sectional area here, uh, okay, we have a lot of dimension here. Uh, sorry, I forget this dimension, which is 10 centimeter. Now, if you remember in the first lecture, I tell you that the heat transfer uh, should be perpendicular on the area that made with, a, with it 90 degrees Celsius. So that, now let us uh, do the following, okay? Uh, 
RTML thermal resistance of A is equal to L of A divided by thermal conductivity of A multiplied by the area of A. Now, the area of A, okay, it is actually uh, wrong to write the area of A is uh, this dimension, which is a 3 multiplied by this. This is not right, okay, because if you make the front view of this again, you can see that uh, this will be 3, okay, and this is a 3 plus 7, this will be 10 centimeter, okay, so that uh, some student multiply by this dimension, by this dimension, to find the area, and, the, and this is for, uh, false, because the area here, uh, this is the wall of A, okay, the area here is this, that make 90 degree with the wall, so that in this way, the area will be uh, 0.1 multiplied by 0.1, okay? This is the area, 0.1 multiplied by 0.1. And this is actually the same area of uh, D, because the D will be the, uh, the same dimension of A, okay? I hope this is clear, okay? Now, I can write area of A will be 0.1 multiplied after I convert them into meter, from centimeter into meter, 0.01 meter squared. Now, the area of B is 0.1 multiplied by 0.03. I type that this is here because this is the area of B, okay? And after that, uh, so you can see that this is the wall of B, okay? I will show the hidden line so that it will be here. This uh, value, which is 0.1, multiplied by this, okay? This. And this is actually 3. This is actually 3, okay? The area of B is this. Okay? So that this will be this dimension, which is 10, multiplied by this, okay? Because this uh, plane will make 90 degree with the flow direction. Where, and this is equal to 3, so that it will be... 0.1 multiplied by 0.03, which is uh, 0.03 meters squared. The area of uh, D of C is 0.1 multiplied by 0.07, and this is of course uh, because this uh, uh, this is wall of C, and its area will be this, which is 0.1 multiplied by this length, which is seven. Okay, so that uh, the answer will be. 0.007 meters square. Finally, the area of D is the same area of D of A, which is 0.01 meters square. Now, after we find the area of A and B and C and D, it is very easy to find the thermal resistance of each wall because uh, the thermal resistance of A will be L of A divided by thermal conductivity of this wall multiplied by its area. The length of wall A is act actually 0.03, okay? This is the length, okay? Not this. The length is this, okay? That we choose the length in the direction of heat, okay? Um, which is parallel to the flow of heat. Divided by thermal conductivity of A is also given, which is uh, 150 multiplied by 0 0.01, and the answer will be 0 0.02. Uh, the unit, of course, as you know, it is uh, Q, which is delta T divided by R. Then R will be watt per uh, sorry um, Celsius divided by watt. Okay. Similarly, we can find the thermal resistance of B, which is 0.89. Thermal resistance of C, 0.176, and thermal resistance of D, which is 0.1. After we find the thermal resistance of each wall, now let me show you how can we represent this diagram, okay? Uh, using the thermal resistance approach, and this is A, B, C, D. We can, uh, using the thermal circuit, which is this, okay? Now, here I have con uh, parallel so that it will be uh, as you study it in the su subject of electric electrical uh, engineering technology. This will be R of uh, B, R of C, R of A, and this is R of D. 
now we you know how can we you treat with the resistance that they are in parallel uh, you can treat with them by using uh, found the thermal resistance which is equivalent which is nothing but thermal resistance of v plus thermal resistance of c and in this way thermal resistance which is equivalent will be 0.147 after that you will find the, the thermal resistance which is total okay which is thermal resistance of a plus thermal resistance which is equivalent which is this value plus thermal resistance of d this which is this okay and thermal resistance of a is this okay after that the thermal resistance which is the total will be 0.267 after we find the total thermal resistance the temperature is also given for us because they are 4000 4, uh, Hundred and this is 60 Celsius, so that we may uh, subtract uh, 400 minus uh, six, uh, 60 and substitute the thermal resistance value here till we get that the overall heat transfer of uh, heat transfer will be 1273 watt. Okay, so that we illustrate a very important topic. Or, and learn for us that the area here is very important and its effect in our calculation the area of the wall is must be this that make 90 degree with the flow direction okay it is the cross the cross section area of the wall okay so that uh, after we calculate the area of each wall and calculate the thermal resistance in uh, which they are in parallel we can calculate the thermal uh, the total thermal resistance and find the heat transfer uh, value so that the concept of resistance of our wall that they are in parallel is very important concept and you should keep your mind when you're dealing with how you can treat this uh, resistance now after that uh, is completed I, we, uh, there are a lot of uh, problem that discuss uh, similar topic uh, to this subject However, this is uh, actually just a tutorial on the heat transfer by conduction in Cartesian coordinate, okay? The heat transfer by conduction in composite wall, okay? Now, as you remember that this is con uh, composite wall is actually using the Cartesian coordinate, which is X, Y, and Z. And we make simplification for the for this equation heat conduction equation which is shall square t shall x square plus shall square t shall y square plus shall square t shall z square uh, plus the heat generation term divided by thermal conductivity equal one by thermal diffusion shall t shall tau which is the time now we make uh, many simplification for example we cancel the heat generation term and we assume that it is just a steady state problem for one dimension till we find the general solution for del square t dt square t dx square is can be found and we find the temperature distribution and uh, after that we apply the heat transfer uh, and Fourier law to the composite wall we illustrate the concept of thermal resistance con concept and the temperature drop in the interface uh, for the composite wall okay for the walls okay however we know that the heat transfer there is equation which is uh, not only for the cartesian but for the cylindrical coordinate and the spherical coordinate so that let me j just tell you before i end this lecture in the next lecture we will treat about the cylindrical coordinate and spherical coordinate we will use the similar approach in the cartesian but the direction will be changed because here we have r okay not x and after we complete this we find that the heat transfer how can we calculate the heat transfer not only from the composite wall but from uh, composite cylinder composite spherical sphere and we can uh, solve many examples uh, regarding this problem after we complete this we will include the following the effect of heat generation term okay 
because our solution till this moment is that this term is zero but if we include the internal heat generation then how can we calculate the heat transfer how can we calculate the temperature distribution we will treat with this also in uh, cylindrical not only in the cartesian but also in cylindrical and spherical coordinate okay finally after we complete uh, the heat generation term okay we will go in another subject which is if we include the temperature term which is if we have this equation for example divided by k one by alpha then how can we solve this equation we will use a finite difference method okay which I will illustrate in the next lecture so that uh, just as a beginning this is the procedure for the next lecture okay after we complete the, this finite difference method for various uh, partial deflation question not only for this but also for uh, if this is term is zero then how can we solve the heat condition equation one kind dimension under the transient uh, unsteady case after that we will try uh, we will go in the convection heat transfer and in the convection we have internal the flow and the external flow all of these topics will be covered in the next lecture this is the end of lecture 3 thank you very much